Hey guys, it's Timmy. Just wanted to share something with you guys real quick and then we'll get right into it. I'll make it pretty brief today. This uh, feather is the one I found. I thought it was a hawk feather. You know, a little mini eagle. It's not. After doing a little bit of digging to get some photos for the darker spots on this next... Um, it was a long prayer circle video that I put out for the other night going into the woods. And there's significance to the dates. I didn't know until I found out after from someone who does research on the numbers and the dates. Really cool stuff I won't go into now. This feather is actually from the great horned owl that I've been listening to out there that I've been mentioning. And in getting feathers, it pretty much is an identical match to the to the owls. So the owls are supposed to be a symbol of wisdom whole bunch of other things but see in the darkness of night all that kind of jazz apex predators move in silence very good hunters I mean it's pretty awesome I think I would prefer this to be the owl feather instead of the hawk or eagle feather anyways so really cool like I can't I can't share that with anybody nobody's as excited about it as I am so that was pretty much like a gift of God laid right on the floor for me on the way home from being out there one night. When... Anyways, it's in the video. Go watch the video if you want to hear the story. This is uh, for this morning. Hebrews 13.13 13 says, Let us go forth, therefore, unto him without the camp. So like I just said, I can't. I don't have anybody I can really share that with that will even find the significance or the value. Okay, so what? You found a feather. Big deal. <laughs> Let's go whip a nene some more now. So, oh, do you want to watch me whip and watch me nene? That's more what I get. So, feather is more cool to me than almost anything that's happened in a long time as far as being a confirmation for me. So, I get to share it with y'all. Y'all are my camp. So, but this says, let us go forth therefore unto him, God, or Jesus, without the camp. It says, Jesus, bearing his cross, went forth to suffer without the gate. The Christian's reason for leaving the camp of the world's sin and religion is not because he loves to be singular, but because Jesus did so. And the disciple must follow his master. Christ was not of the world. His life and his testimony were a constant protest against conformity with the world. Never was such overflowing affection for men as you find in him. But still, he was separate from sinners. In like manner, Christ's people must go forth unto him. They must take their position without the camp, as witness bearers for the truth. They must be prepared to tread the straight and narrow path. They must be bold, unflinching, with lion-like hearts loving Christ first and his truth next and Christ and his truth beyond all the world. Jesus would have his people go forth without the camp for their own sanctification. You cannot grow in grace to any high degree while you are conformed to the world. The life of separation may be a path of sorrow, but it is the highway of safety. And though the separated life may cost you many pangs and may every day be a battle, Yet it is a happy life after all. No joy can excel that of the soldier of Christ. Jesus reveals himself so graciously and gives such a sweet refreshment that the warrior feels more calm and peace in his daily strife than others in their hours of rest. The highway of holiness is the highway of communion. It is thus we shall hope to win the crown if we are enabled by divine grace faithfully to follow Christ without the camp. The crown of glory will follow the cross of separation. A moment's shame will be well recompensed by eternal honor. A little while of witness bearing will seem nothing when we are forever with the Lord. Following the truth and following Christ will divide. He said, I came to um, separate, not unify. Now, he's love, but when you stand on truth and love, it separates you from untruth and conditional love or free love or hate. 
or anger or any of the things that can, can cause division and strife between people and their relationships. So you get in where you fit in into this military conflict. Wherever you are in this world, you're not of it. And the more you become of this world, the more separate you become from God. The more sin you allow in your life and you justify it. So we really need to look at ourselves and our own personal walks. Nobody's better than anybody else. Period. We're all at different places and we're all being fashioned and molded in the way that God sees fit. How can we help Him? Or what can we do to make it an easier process? Because we're all being purified. You know, when you, when you purify gold, you have to heat it up. And you basically cook out the impurities. So as we pass through the daily fires of conflict in our own personal lives, rather it be family situations, um, children that don't behave, husbands or wives that are separating themselves emotionally, becoming distant, you know, parents that you never had, parents that did things that no human being should ever do to another, whatever it is, you know, rather be a nine to five job you hate, but you have to go there every day to, for your benefits or for your health coverage, which is dwindling daily, uh, or rather be a health situation where you have no benefits or you have no insurance or whatever it is, you know, if, if you're too young to die but you've got a sickly body or rather you're old and lived a long life and you feel like it's your time to go, maybe it's not. Maybe there's still work to be done. Maybe your wisdom needs to be imparted to others before God wants to call you home. We're all fighting a fight every day and the world's a cold, cruel place that'll beat you down to your knees if you let it. Sometimes even when you don't let it, it'll still beat you to your knees. What do we do about it? You know, we got to seek Him, and without the camp, you can't expect your friends to be there for you. You can't even expect your family to be there for you. Some people don't have friends or family. You can't depend on your home. It could be gone in a moment. You can't depend on anything but God. And the more you can trust in Him, and the more you can put in Him, I'm just here to tell you, in the tumults of my life, the more faith I put into God, the easier it was getting through the fire. But don't get me wrong, don't get it twisted, that fire burns, okay? Life burns. But do you sit there and focus on the burn, or do you look at the purification of how good that gold is when it's coming out of the other side of that fire? That's wisdom, guys and girls, ladies and gentlemen. Every day is a struggle, every day is a fight to get up out of bed sometimes. You know, to get things done in a timely fashion when you're behind the gun of time. Um, sometimes going to a place you hate to be and then sitting there or working there for an all day long event or having customers where you enjoy your fellow employees but maybe it's the customers that ruin your experience daily. Or maybe it's the other way around, you love your customers but you hate the employees or your bosses or the higher level management or maybe you're in higher level management and you get tired of being the only one that actually cares about what you're doing or maybe you have people that drag their feet and you have to pick up the slack whatever it is what do we focus on what do we learn when we serve people we serve God when we're serving and doing work we're working for God not for the man not for a company not for a paycheck those are the things that just come with it if you realize that there's wisdom there to be had and your experience will be greatly benefited because of it Seek ye first the kingdom of heaven, and all these things will be added unto you. So if you want to add all the good stuff, you can't make that the prize. If that's the prize, well, when you don't get the prize or you fail along the way, what's the point anyhow? When you make Jesus and God the prize, you keep your eye on the prize, and it doesn't matter what happens, good, bad, or ugly along the way, you find a way to appreciate it. And that's really all God wants is your appreciation, your love, your worship, your praise, your attention, your time. We're on His time anyways. Your body's not yours, it's His. Your thoughts aren't yours, they should be His. Your heart's not yours, it should be His. He is the camp. And if you go ahead without the camp for your own sanctification, you'll realize that. He is the camp. So, Father God, thank you for the wisdom that you've imparted us Thank you for Mr. Spurgeon. I know he's long gone. 
but thank you for letting the man be a man of God that could impart wisdom to us in your Holy Spirit. Father, thank you for giving us your Holy Spirit and giving me the opportunity to walk with you and to talk with you and to share with anybody who's willing to open an ear and listen the word and the truth and the wisdom and the light and the life. Thank you for letting me share salvation and how to get it with people. Thanks for showing me what it was and how to share it. I believe it in my heart, I speak it with my mouth, and I walk it to the best of my ability, and I fail daily. I'm not perfect, nobody's perfect, but we're trying to attain that perfection because Jesus was, and that's who we seek after, and that's who we follow. So, let us pick up our crosses and follow Him. Father God, just guide me today and give me whatever it is today that you want me to do for you. How can I serve you? It's not what you can do for me, but it's what I can do for you. Not what the people that are listening or helping, what they can do for me, but how can I help and serve them? Because by helping and serving them, Father God, I'm serving you. Thank you for giving me peace in times of trouble. And thank you for giving me trouble in times of peace. So that way I can grow and become more sanctified in your holy name, in your grace, in your mercy, in your wisdom. Um, and I just ask and beg you for more. Well, Father, please hear our prayers as you have, and please answer them with the most God speed that you can have available to your pleasure to fulfill your will and your desire in people's lives. There's so many people hurting. There's so many people dying. There's so many people in the process of dying. Father, we need you right now. Please give us a, a hug and an embrace and give us that holy kiss on the lips. Amen.